correcting him, so. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, start today. We're going to continue on with some more while loops. And uh, we've done all kinds of while loops with numbers and printing out these boxes and things like that. Uh, I want to say that a while loop can be used for all kinds of other things. So let's say we want a menu. We want to add a menu to our program. And uh, typically what we're going to do with a menu is we have to ask the user for something and take that value and execute some type of code based on the number they selected. So menus look a lot like this. Let's, let's print out the menu first. I might do something like, uh, for number one, I want to uh, draw a box. And then for number two, I might say draw a triangle. And for number three, I might say quit. All right, we'll make it short because we're running out of time already. So that's a, that's a menu that then the user would select a one, two, or three and expect that function to be executed. This is an old style DOSI type menu that we do. In Visual Studio, you would drag a menu on the screen and you'd be done, right? Whole different thing. But uh, this is just to, to give us some, some playing around. So let's run it and see what I get. So it prints it out. Looks good. I'm happy with that. Uh, but the program quit, right? So how do I know what they want to do? What would be my next? OK. Um, I might ask them a question instead. If I just prop this menu up there, they don't know that they're waiting for something. So I say, uh, I might do something like puts enter your selection. And I might change this to a print, because I like my my thing, my questions and my prompts to be on the same line. I'm going to put a colon and thank you, colon and a space, thank you. And then I'm going to get a variable like uh, user input. I'm going to store whatever they type. And almost always, what do I do with my gets? OK, I could do a chomp or an integer. OK, I'd probably do a 2i because I want to use that number and just do a simple numeric comparison of what they entered to do something, okay? So now I have the value, what would I do now? Okay, if user input equivalent to one, I might do something like uh, drawing a box, all right? We won't actually do the code for that. And then how do I check for number two and the three? So I'd say else if uh, user input is equal to two, I might say puts drawing drawing a triangle. And then the final solution is, do I need to check that, that it's a three? Kind of. So uh, else if. Uh, user input equals three, then I just want to quit, all right? So I'm going to say quitting. And then I end it. And so let's run this now and see if my little menu works. I can say enter number one, and it says drawing a box, but it quits right away. That's not very useful if I want to go back and do something else. So let's run it again. Make sure that all my pieces work. If I do a two, it draws a triangle. That's good. If I do a three, it says I'm quitting and it quits. Well, I got the quitting down good. That works really well. Now, how might I continue to do this until something happens? That should instantly draw your mind to a while loop. OK, some looping mechanism to do this until I tell it not to do it anymore. So I need a while loop around this entire thing because I want to also show them the menu every time because perhaps this triangle might scroll the menu way off the screen. I don't remember the number anymore. So I want to present the menu to them again and let them choose a number again. So I need to do that inside of my loop continuously. So how do we do a loop? 
Well, we have some initial condition, and then we have a while loop while that condition is less than, or some Boolean expression. So I need a initial condition. And then I need, inside of it, I need to change my condition. So what can I use to uh, make this run until it quits? That's the thing we have to think about. What changes inside the loop? Well, the user input, OK? So I can use the user input value as my condition and my initial condition. So I can say user input is what? Not equal to 3. All right, that sounds good. While it's not equal to 3, I want to do all of this, and I need an end statement for this for my while loop. Now, look, notice RubyMine did that for me. But what's wrong with this? OK. OK, I need, before I use a variable, I have to set the variable. In this case, I'm checking that a variable has some value in it, and I haven't put any value in it yet. So I can't use this user input first. I might just select some garbage in here. I need to set that to something. What might that be? Anything that's not three. I could just make it an empty string for now. All right. Now, what else is wrong with this a la Dave? Indentation. Indentation, right. So one nice thing with RubyMine, I can select all of the statements here and hit tab, and bada boom, it's all perfect. Oops, what happened? It was perfect. All right, so everything is indented one line. All of these are on the same line. Inside my if statements are indented again. All my puts and everything is on the same line. I have some vertical spacing to separate out checking the value versus printing the menu versus getting the data. See how I separated those out vertically, and uh, it makes it a lot easier to read. Yes, sir? Earlier you said you like spaces in your then statements, too. It's true. So, uh, so that's one of those one conditional ones. If you're doing it. If you have only one line, it doesn't make sense. But if, in reality, I'm going to have more lines in here. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put a, a blank line so I can separate these out. These kind of now stand out as a separate block of code, and I can see them better. So very good. Anything else I need on this? All right, let's see what happens uh, if I put it forth. So let's run it. And I can say one draw box, and it says draw the box, and it redrew my menu, and it's sitting here waiting for more input. So it, it did that fine. It drew my box. Let's do a two. Drawing a triangle, nice. Came back around to the loop. My user input is not equal to three, so it's staying inside my loop. Now if I enter a three, it says quitting. So why did it print quitting before it quit, actually quit up here? Well, you have to think about execution, OK? It's, it's printing the menu. It's asking for the, the user information. It gets that user val value. I come down here through my if statements. I print out quitting. And then it says, OK, what is the value of user input now? At this line, if I entered a 3, what is user input? 3. So I go back up to the while loop. It says, while user input not equal to 3, well, that's a, that's a false statement now. 3 is not equal to 3 is false. 3 is equal to 3, so it, it says, OK, I, I have to break out of this loop and go to the line after this end statement for the while loop. So if I had more code down here, more code down here, it would start executing that, and my menu would have quit there. So let's try now some other values. Uh, if I put a 4, it doesn't do anything. It just, but it prints my menu again. So how do they know they, they did a mistake? If I put a 5 in, if I put a, a big number in, it still prints my menu. It stays inside my menu. So that looks like it's working good. But what would be a nice thing to tell the user? That they're stupid. I mean, that they, they entered the wrong number, right? We want to tell them that they entered the wrong number. So where would I do that in my code here? 
after the last else if. So anything else, that's where my else comes in. Else, any other number or letter or anything gets entered, then I want to do something. I want to put, uh, you are an idiot. Enter a number between one and three. All right, let's make it. We're very user friendly in our programs, right? So we're going to run it again. And if I enter Apple, what is Apple going to be converted to? No. In our input, what are we doing here? What is it converted to? An integer, but what would that value be? Remember, we a zero, right? It would be a zero because it found no number in that in that beginning of that string that made sense. So by default, the two i gives me a zero back. So so we can enter Apple, and Apple is okay. It says you're an idiot. Enter a number between one and three. If I enter a thousand, I'm still an idiot. I enter a two. Everything works fine. A negative number is the same thing. It would be you're an idiot. Uh, how about this one though? An apple, one apple, right? It scans the number, the input that I give it, up until the point where it doesn't have any numbers anymore, and it says, okay, that's a one. I'll return you a one. So it should say, drawing a box, which is correct, and three will be quit, and I quit. So I've got a nice user menu here that's fairly easy to add, and any questions on any of this stuff? Pretty cool, huh? Isn't that fun? <laughs> so I have some people, this is a style thing. I can actually do this on one line, and I've had some people do this. Um, if I put a, a slash n, what does a slash n mean? A new line. So this will actually work. If I run it, it prints out my menu correctly. But how hard is it now to add a, a fourth item? Pretty hard. I have, to, I have to find out where in this, add a carriage return. Whereas if I had it all on separate lines, oops, I went too far. Redo. Uh, if I had it on separate lines, I could just do uh, a copy and a paste, make this four, and make this draw a circle. And it's a lot easier to deal with. And I might change my values down here. This is going to be four. I'm going to have a user input for three. A lot easier to see. It, it makes more sense to my brain. Uh, now I've, I've added another value here. Very simply, very easy to do. Add another menu item. I do. Now, uh, another nice thing is I might want to do this. What does puts by itself do? It gives me a new line, a blank line. Uh-oh. Uh, I did something. I have a, oh, that's what it was. There we go. Fine. All right, so what I did was I separated out the quit statement from the rest of the menu items. It just looks nice. It, it makes the quit stand out. That's personal preference. Yeah, you could do that too. Put another. I could do that lots of ways. Put a slash in here. No. That's interesting. That seems to be a new problem with Ruby 1.9. It kind of strips out slash ends here. And that's why some of you guys didn't do a chomp on your input for your header string, and it still worked OK. And it didn't used to do that. Uh, now I have to put two, which is weird. That's not correct. I consider that a bug in Ruby. Anyway, lots of ways to do that. All right, any other questions? Good stuff. So now we built ourselves a menu, which you will be using in your later programs uh, coming up in a couple weeks. You're going to have menu-driven programs now. So go dream of Ruby.